You know, my parents um, and my grandparents were Christians so when I was very, very young, but my parents really had a rough time, you know, with the things of God and with each other, and they really left the things of God for a big season of my early childhood. Mm -hmm. A time in her life she doesn't enjoy talking about, it was a trying time for her and her family. Juggling her role as a child actor on a local television show and dealing with her parents' divorce, she was forced to grow up pretty quickly. But it was during this time that she found God. When I was 15, I was living in the room of a home of a single mum at a local church. And um, yeah, my father recommitted his life to Christ and he came. Um, one day he said, baby girl, I'm taking you to the church, pick me up and, you know, I went and got a job, I moved out, you know, it was a, just a turbulent time, I was really lonely. So when, when um, I went to a youth meeting, when the pastor said, does anyone want to receive Christ, there was two of us that kind of ran. Mm. It, it overwhelms me still, it, it, um, it was just everything that I was looking for. When I became a Christian, you know, at 15, I, I'd always been singing since I was little, you know, paid to sing since I was 10. Mm. Um, but I started writing songs when I was 15, as soon as I got saved, really. And every song still came as a shock. It was like, oh, I think that might actually be a song. And I still feel exactly the same. Really? Yeah. So I love doing it. Um, but every time I just go, oh, <laughs> that might work, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, um, I, I work on it and hone that gift, but um, I certainly don't take it for granted. Mm. Um, okay, well, you know, we were um, not in full-time ministry or anything like that and had a business that was struggling and I was singing jingles and we were working voluntary at the church and um, two little girls, you know, and spin mum and um, it was at a really hard time in the business and you know we just didn't have any money and had big dreams but our reality compared to that you know was very very different and I was out of frustration really went and sat at this piano that my parents bought me when I was five and um, it was quite out of tune and I just turned to the Psalms you know I've, all, I've learned to do that I learned to do that early is just open the word, especially the Psalms, and pray and sing and write, you know, for me it kind of all weaves into one and I just, I really didn't write that song, I just started to sing it. Between Psalm 96 and Psalm 100 really are those words and they kind of all fall on the same two pages, you know, so I opened Psalm 96 and um, yeah, I just started singing, it took about 20 minutes to write it. I didn't play it to anybody for a while because I just felt like it was so simple and when I finally did, I made the worship pastor at our church at that time and the music director stand with their backs to me because I was so embarrassed, you know, I'm, all, wow. I'm quite a shy person when I'm playing and singing and I'm like, change anything you want and then I'd start again, it's not really any good, de -de -de -de. and when I finally got it out, um, Jeff said, that's beautiful. We're going to sing that this week. And it just, it kind of, as soon as I played it, it took off. It just had a life of its own. It just left me. And I just went to the piano and um, between Psalm 96 and Psalm, 90, and Psalm 100, you'll find Shout to the Lord. And I just sit, sat and literally worshipped God. And in about 20 minutes, that song fell out. 20 minutes? I didn't even really, I can't claim to have written it. It just came out and I didn't play it to anyone for a little while and then played it to our worship pastor at the time and he said, I think this is a really good song. And I had um, just fit in this little appointment in the city at the Sydney Breast Clinic and um, I'd been checking out this lump that I'd had for four times in that two year period leading up and everyone said, you know, it's nothing, just fatty tissue and I'm you know, welcome to the 40s. There's more fatty tissue than you'd like to admit. Um, and so, but I was having a lot more discomfort than um, normal. Yeah. So I went back in and I was with my girlfriend and we're like, we'll just drop in and, you know, it takes an hour and then we'll just keep shopping. And um, 
after the first test, they said, no, we're a bit concerned and we'll do a biopsy. So they did a biopsy and- On the spot. On the spot. And that's what's great about this place. It does mm. everything. And then they said it's inconclusive. So, and I really felt the Holy Spirit just say to me to stay. Mm. And so I just said, look, I'm, I'm not comfortable about leaving with an inconclusive diagnosis. I need a conclusive. I need to know yes or no. This has been a long time. Um, so then they did a core biopsy on the same day with my girlfriend <laughs> singing in my ear, Aww. you know, trying to find um, songs on my iPod, you know, because it's pretty intense. And yeah. she's going, like the first song that came out was this real screaming praise song. I'm like, get it off, get it off. And then she's like, Jesus. And I'm like, oh, stop singing, stop. And it was hilarious, even though it was serious. And um, yeah, before I left that day, they said, you know, it, it is definitely cancer. And it was a shock. And we never got our Christmas shopping done, as mm. you can imagine. My husband was actually on his way to a preaching um, thing in Orange and he just turned around and came home and um, yeah the next couple of days were filled with more tests and um, by the Friday I had been booked into surgery so I had surgery on the 20th of December and I got home Christmas Eve because if we waited till after Christmas be another month mm -hmm. and everyone goes on holidays and they said this needs to be dealt with straight away it was pretty serious yeah and um, needed to know if it was anywhere else or you know all that stuff so a lot of question marks over the future yeah a lot of fear i was uh, i was good but i wasn't good at the same time you know and my kids were amazing and so we just all prayed and it was our christmas services weekend you know all the animals and you know we had services everywhere so that was actually such a blessing because just the whole weekend I was surrounded by just craziness and songs of joy and community and gift giving and mm. it really kept me very buoyant. No. I told one lady who's a real prayer warrior, um, Mark and I just decided, you know, until I'd had surgery, we just, we didn't really know what we were dealing with and we didn't want to put more fear in people. Mm -hmm. And also for our children, we didn't want them to have to absorb everyone's fears yep. while we weren't there. Mm. Um, so we just decided to keep it really small and we didn't tell the church till after I'd had surgery and we went on holidays for a week before I started chemotherapy and um, told the church there and they were simply incredible and still, you know, just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on that first day of chemo, can you tell us a little bit about your thought process? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I still get quite teary, you know, I'm not at that place where I can go, oh, I'm so glad I went through that. Mm. Um, even though in some ways I am because of the things I've found in God that I wouldn't change for anything, yeah. you know, but um, it's just so confronting on every level, you know, they, they, um, they suit up and they look like they're going to the moon, you know, they're so well covered and yet yeah. they're putting that stuff straight inside of you. Yeah. But I tell you what, you know, I'll, I'll show you this, like my, this beautiful prayer warrior from our church. Right from my first day, she started writing me this book um, of promises, scriptures. Um, it's, it's amazing. So from before surgery, every scripture God gave her, you know, your healing will be way beyond a physical healing. It's physical, spiritual, emotional. You'll be... You will never be in want. Every page is filled. You can see it's wow. just filled with promises, 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 scriptures, words of encouragement, prophetic words. And then I kept going as well. So on when I was having chemo, you know, I started to take this book everywhere with me. Yeah. And my little book um, from Joseph Prince, which I took into <laughs> surgery, they're going, we have Healing to remove promises. your book now. And I'm like, no, you can take it when I'm asleep. But up until that point, it is staying on my chest. Yep. And they're like, okay. <laughs> Probably thinking we're dealing with a nutter here. But I just, the word of God, yep. his promises, you know, and I don't just read it, I speak it out. I mm. declare it over my life, over my body. Yep. I still am doing that every day. And, and this little book of prophetic words became really important and is very important to me. Yeah. So um, that first day of chemo, like 
So, you know, there's different chemo for different things, um, for different types of breast cancer, if it's bowel cancer, so you always have a different concoction. Yeah. But the first bag of stuff they put into me is a very intense drug, but it's red and everything else is clear. And it's so funny, she starts hooking it up and I'm looking at it and I'm going, there's that song, No Longer a Slave, and it says, and his blood runs through my veins. Yeah. So before they even started putting it in me, I had this revelation, his blood runs through my veins in this chemo, is only going to harm the things it is meant to harm yeah. and it is not going to destroy my body yeah. as much of chemos can do. You, mm. They can cause a whole lot of other issues. Um, so that's what I did and you know, so every time they'd put it into me six times over 20 weeks, I just like the blood of Jesus, thank you God, you're doing what only you can do. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. I love to be in worship in church in it's just surrounded by faith yeah and you know just god's presence just to be in him and to be very aware that he was with me and near me very very close you know mm -hmm. so that was worship through music sometimes just on my bed well many times just on my bed just playing different songs and different things that really blessed me and than being in church, I needed to be around faith. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing. You know, being in the Word, but also being around faith. I, I couldn't handle, and I'm still a little bit like it. People are well-meaning, but say stupid things. Yeah, and if people start getting heavy with me, you know, I mean, I heard all sorts of things about my lack of faith, my, um, you know, moving churches, um, you know, that God was not pleased and. Oh my God, mm. this is not from you. Yeah. You know, these sicknesses are not from you. Yeah. And I had a real revelation of his love for me. Yeah. And because he loves me, I can trust him. He, he did not bring this upon me, but he has allowed it. Therefore, I can trust him because he loves me. I can trust him with the journey. Mm. And, you know, so I could only have songs that fed that faith in me. Yeah. I wouldn't. You know, I just turn things off. I'd say to people, just, can you stop? Like, I, I would never do that in the past, but mm. if they would be praying and, you know, they get heavy and they start to cry when they're praying, and God, if it's your will, just whatever your will is. And I'm like, well, ha um, hang on. It's God's will that I will live. Yeah. So can we pray like that, please? Yes. Like I had to keep confronting people's fears even mm. while they prayed. But I'm like, okay, people, I know you. this is an expression of love, but... Yeah. Can love be pointing me towards hope? Yes. Yeah. And not pulling me down the slippery slide of um, what ifs. Yeah. Just, you know, because mm. we win either way. Like, I definitely had to confront my mortality. I mean, you think about it and with our children yeah. and my husband, we had to talk about all the things that no one wants to talk about, mm -hmm. which is very, very difficult. But I planned just to be good, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, Mark and I both lost our dads to cancer. Mm -hmm. um, one of my best friends is very sick with cancer. You know, I'm, you know I, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm around people passing away due to cancer. Yeah. So you have to go, okay, you know, whether I live or die, yeah. I'm still victorious. Yeah. But I just have never had a peace that it's my time. Yeah. And you know, I got this uh, in my belly, like, you know, cancer is not telling me when my time is up. Yeah. Now, when God says my time is up, that's a different story. But no devil in hell is taking me out. Yeah. And I, I mean, I just, what can I say? I've just stood on the word and I'm like, no. And actually, my reports are great. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm on... Uh, I've had another little surgery since then and um, just a few weeks ago and I'm on new medication and it's all very intense medication. It's not like taking a Panadol. Yeah. So your body has to negotiate new things all the time but I have such a peace in it. Yeah. 
and I, you know, all my oncologists and I'm in a, in a pod of oncologist professors so that I haven't got just one person looking after me. I've got three. Yeah. And they're all crossing. And that's good. It's really, I mean, yeah. I love team. You know, yeah. I'm always, I'm team player. I can't do just my thing with one doctor. I'm like, no, you yeah. know, I love band, I love church, I love family, <laughs> I love team. Like, this needs a team approach. And, and I feel like even a lot of people don't like having chemo, they don't believe in it. Again, I got people going, you know, well, that's such a lack of faith. But you've got to go where your peace is for yeah. your journey. And for some people, it's just not right. Well, f for me, straight away when they said it, um, I, with a very great surgeon who um, is a Christian. Amazing. And, I mean, and I've had the best care. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was well, God. No, that's right. <laughs> But he said to me, you're going to get through this. Yeah. You need to give yourself a year and it's going to be really hard. He said, we're going to take you to the brink. Yeah. And we're going to bring you back. And I'm like, I didn't go, hallelujah. I just breathed and cried and, you know, all those things. And my husband was right with me and straight away I'm like, I have a peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. Straight away. I never had any thought, not that I can't do it. I mean, on, maybe on chemo four or five, I thought, I don't know if I can do this I, because it makes you feel like you want to die. Mm. You know, there's a few days every time that you think, am I going to pull through? I don't know. Yeah. You end up back in hospital. You end up, you know, it's very intense. But but then there's a grace, you know, mm. and it's so amazing. So straight away, I felt that peace for the journey. Oh, look, you'll have to excuse me if I cry, because I do, I go from zero to 10 ugly cry like that, so. And, and you know, I have a dear friend who starts chemo today. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know, I'm mad that she has to face that. Mm. But anyway, God is good. You yeah. know, even when I was preparing for surgery, um, and this beautiful nurse just walks in and shuts the blind and she goes, I know who you are, can we pray? Yeah, baby, let's pray. And she's prayed for me. Yeah. Well, I've, I've never seen her again. I don't know who she is, but, you know, I was so grateful. And even when later I had to go and have some scans, you know, that are very intense. And so I'm, I'm in this machine and you're by yourself and I, you know, you're strapped so tight and I'm crying because I couldn't help it. I'm just, yeah. you know, your mind is, well, um, about four days later and I'm still in hospital and really sick. This nurse comes in and she says, oh, you know, I'm not meant to say, not meant to say all these things, but she said, I was in your scan. I was the nurse that was being there as a double, you know, as a person to watch over what was going on. Yeah. And I prayed in the spirit for you the whole time. Wow. And I'm just like, God, you are so kind. You don't miss a thing. You don't miss a thing. Mm. I was really, that was probably the time I felt most alone yeah. on this journey. And the whole time there was someone like two meters away behind a glass wall that I didn't know and she'd pray in the spirit for me. What is that? Yeah. That is the kindness of that's God. God. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So yeah, in the midst of all of it, that's why I can say, you know, it's been the hardest two years of my life by, by a long way, but in many ways very glorious because just finding out more things about Jesus mm. that are so real and rich and yeah. personal and intensely magnificent yeah you know which I wouldn't know I mean I know that but I hadn't known it at such a deep level mm. just being there you know I've, I noticed that and it's fine you know people who don't who makes them feel uncomfortable and they don't know what to say and so they just pull away completely and there was so many people um, who that was the case just yeah. didn't hear from them at all and I knew that wasn't about me that was just about they wouldn't know what to do yeah and I would say to the girls in our church you know when what what you bring when you bring you is you bring presence you bring your presence and you bring God's presence yeah you don't have to say a thing just just be come closer than is comfortable yeah um, and be okay with it you know I mean I when I was in bed always that first week um, my one of my best friends Miriam you know, who laid hands on me every day, Miriam Webster, you know, you play her song, you know, she's one of, she's just one of the greatest girls in the world, and she'd lay hands on me every single day, every day, and she would make sure that my home downstairs 
because she knows how much home means to me and I like it to be happy. Yeah. Mama, you know, if mum is happy, everyone's happy. I love that. So she would, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, but she would just, you know, have some of the older ladies over and they would be doing my ironing and they'd be all playing with Zoe and, you know, it's hard on the kids. And um, they'd just be laughing and playing music and writing songs and, and you know, they did that for months and months just yeah. to make sure home was joyful. Yeah. You yeah. know? Because cancer is scary, yeah, and it's not you know not about me; it's about everyone else around. And so you know, just to help the family stay yeah. light, yeah, um, it's just so amazing. And the other thing, um, you know, we've started doing these breast cancer days, these pink days on the coast, and they've just been amazing. I mean, we've been able to start something really significant up here on the coast, and um, yeah, I said to the girls just last week. And, and commu- lots of community girls and I said look just don't you know in trying to say something don't say this which many people said to me they go oh I had an auntie who had that and you go oh how's she doing they're like oh no no she didn't make it like so many people so, and I think they start and then they a don't conversation know how to and they don't know what to do put it back in. and I'm like yeah can you not can you not do that yeah. just tell us great stories you know yeah. tell us Bring hope, be hope to be people. Hope. The power of your words. It is, yeah. and, and bring it intentionally. Yeah. Um, because you're scrambling for it. You yeah. know, when you're full of fear and you're feeling sick, and you know, you, when you look in the mirror, you look like a skinned rabbit because you got, you know, you're just skinny and you got no hair in your head, and you feel you feel better than you look, you know. And yeah. Then, and then sometimes you feel terrible, and then for people to say things, it doesn't take much for you to go like this, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, just bring hope. Bring a meal. Doesn't have to be a lasagna. Shepherd's <laughs> <laughs> <Like, laughs> pie. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and just fresh food, fresh life, fresh energy. You yeah. know, bring all that to the table. Push past your own fears. Beautiful. Not one day went past. Not one day in that whole kind of eight months that there wasn't a meal. Flowers, wow. Just books, you know, things for the kids, gifts. Yeah. I, I am eternally grateful, you know, for the, the family of God. Yeah. I really am. And just flowers from all over the world. Like, I was just like, people, you don't have to do this. But it made me, it just, it let me know that people were praying us as a family and sometimes the prayers felt like a tidal wave Mm. like I literally was doing something and all of a sudden I felt this surge of life you know and I'm like people are praying yeah like and because of that now I don't want anyone to miss out on that you know Mm. I I met so many people on my journey in hospital rooms um, that have had to do it by themselves yeah you know or whose partners walked out mid treatment or wow single mums you know just doing it and yeah. on their own and I'm like okay not on our watch church not on our watch not on yeah. the central coast this is not going to happen mm. you know so we've been working really hard to put some things in place so that that doesn't need to happen you've got to be okay with it all for a good year okay you know you've got to let go of those external things yeah to concentrate on the internal things and so I really did that um you know, when your hair's fallen out in clumps and, you know, it's very confronting. Mm. Um, and so I had a girlfriend come over and shave my head because it hurts. Who would have thought that hair, losing your hair, like when it's falling out, it hurts. Wow. And um, so my kids, you know, they just sat at my feet while she shaved my head and they just said, you're beautiful. And I'm thinking, <laughs> No, I really am not. (laughs) But they just, you know, spoke life over me while that was happening. And, um, you know, after that, I'm like, well, you know, it would have been a real pain to actually have to do my hair while I was feeling so (laughs) sick. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to just keep light about it. And hair grows back, you know, mine's growing back. It's awesome. I've got some extensions in there to help (laughs) it along. And, um, yeah, I'm just, you know, grateful. And look, to be honest, it's made me less um, worried about external 
yeah. things, you know, I don't spend as so much time even thinking about those things. I'm always thinking, okay, you know, how's my heart mm. today before God? How's my, you know, is there anyone I need to forgive? I don't want to ever have this locked up unforgiveness. And, you know, I did have some. Mm. So, you know, when you go to those deep places, you do find out things about yourself that mm. you would love not to admit to, but now I'm like, whatever, I'm an open book, <laughs> you know. Um, and I do do that and I, I have more, I spend more time, you know, making sure I'm eating well and eating what I need to eat and drinking what I need to drink and um, I never in the past would have spent so much time in a day just making sure my inner, my emotional, my spiritual, my physical world were good. Wow. I never would have done that. I mean, I always have been fit and I've always, you know, I've been pretty healthy and you know love the word I'm in the word but now I don't know it's very different very mm. intentional yeah I'm learning to stop the world for those moments yeah just everything can wait and actually I refuse now to live a busy life I, I mean I did a couple of times just go God I don't understand and right at the beginning and I told this to our church I've been very honest with our church um, I had to really get a new revelation of God's love because he said to me right from the beginning, do you trust me? And I was really quick to answer. And I'm like, of course I trust you. I trust you. You know, I gave all the right answers. Um, and then he said, do you know that I love you? And I couldn't answer mm -hmm. because I said, it doesn't feel like love. Yeah. And I was just being honest. I'm like, you know, he's big enough to cope with my human frailty. Absolutely. And, you know, this book that my friend Sue wrote for me, do you know the whole, all of those scriptures, this is before any of that, all of those scriptures are about the love of God for me. Wow. And I just, you know. He already knew. He already knew. He already knew. He already knew. Yeah. You know, so I've been learning about yeah. this love of God that is so whole mm. that comes charging at us no matter what whether we're in doubt or fear or whether we're trying to run or we're the love of God is bigger than all of it you know so it's been it's been amazing and he's chased me down and held me down yeah you know the scripture that really held me when I got saved I was living out of home I was 15 and Psalm 139 yeah that whole psalm where it's, you know, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and he's knit me together and he knew me before any day came to pass. And that scripture has just wrecked me. Mm. That chapter has wrecked me. And then um, Psalm 91, yeah. which is, he's my refuge, my stronghold. And, you know, I'm, right at the end it says, and with long life, you know, I will, with long life I will show him my salvation. And I'm like, God, you're so good. And I just hold on to those things. And I mean, I've got a book of scriptures that are, they're more important to me than water. Yeah. They're more important to me than any of that. You know, they're literally keeping me alive. So, um, yeah, worship, worship has been everything. I mean, it's um, the fact that right from that first biopsy, I just had to play worship music yeah sitting in the hospital I just had to play worship music because it changes the atmosphere it does and it yeah. helps it helps it, it um it kind of what can I say like like a mother with her babies worship gathers your faith and helps gather your heart and pull it into a safe place you know and give it the strength to declare what without it it'd be very very hard to do you know, so worship is such a nurturer of our deepest places. And um, yeah, I just go, I, I, I've been amazed at what God has done in my heart through worship. And I mean, on my worst day, my girlfriend from Queensland came over, jumped into bed with me and put on You Make Me Brave by <laughs> Bethel. <laughs> yeah. And I just lay in bed and... You know, the night before, I felt like I was going to die. I just, you know, so I'm laying in bed and literally hearing that song and every time it got to you make me brave, it's just like I could feel my body responding mm. 
to this worship. Well, faith in God is not based on what we see and what we feel. And faith in God is based on the Holy Spirit at work in us. And it's all through the power of His Word and through the name of Jesus. You know, so, I mean, for me, I'm like, I had to get to that point. Whether I live or die, mm -hmm. I still win. Yeah. And my father, just before he passed away to cancer, you know, and I was devastated and I said, Dad, why aren't we seeing your healing? And he just looked at me, he's like, oh, you have no idea. I am healed. He said, I, I've got a miracle. He said, I've got the miracle of salvation. I've got the miracle of eternity with Christ. I've got the miracle of all my family around me, praying with me, strengthening me. He said, I'm living in miracles. Yeah. The one you're believing for, maybe we're not going to see it. He said, but I'm still living in miracles. And it just really taught me to see bigger than what I see. Yeah. And you know, God who knows from the beginning, from the end, mm. we can trust him, you know? So yeah. everything in me, I will pray with all faith for anyone walking through any suffering, whether whatever it is, I will pray with all faith. I know my God heals and he may not do it today in your body, but he may do it tomorrow. Mm. And just, you may not have seen it for 20 years, but he may do it tomorrow. You know, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years and suddenly she just brings this faith in Christ and just touches the hem of his garment and she's just totally healed. Um, you know, a little faith of a mustard seed is all you need. You've just got to trust God. And you, we don't trust Him because of His benefits. Yeah. We trust Him because of His love. And I think you've got to, you know, if you're believing, then keep believing. Because God's Word is true. But we've got to believe in the concept of eternity as well. You know, just not what we want and when we want it. And I think, you know, it's a... It's a trap that we can all fall into, but we, we go by faith. Yeah. So yeah. believe, stand, sing, pray, be tenacious. Worship. That's right. <laughs> Just be tenacious in what you believe. Don't, don't sit back because you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Because, you know, it might be tonight, it might be tomorrow, it might be next month. Believe, believe. Don't strive, just, you know, trust him, he's a good God. And, and actually that's what I learned, you know, I guess early on in my Christian walk, you know, people said to me, never question God, you mm. know. But actually I just found him to be such a good father. He's such a good father and he spoke to me in amazing ways that I'm sure I never would have learned some of these things on mountaintops. I thought I knew how much he loved me. But then one day he asked me, what do you believe? And I'm like, I believe this and this and this and this. You know, I was a very good Christian and all my answers. And then he said, no, no, what do you believe, daughter, about how much I love you? And it took me days to answer because I said to him, this doesn't feel like love. But he's a good God, he's okay, he's got big shoulders. He's okay with our, with our questioning and our, you know, I think the bigger the question, the bigger the answer, you know. It may, it may be sickness, it may be loss, it may be disappointment. And sometimes you feel like heaven's silent, and God, how, how can this be loved, you know. But actually, if you go back to the word, you know, it just underpins everything. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're listening, he is speaking. And I think sometimes trouble and, and intense hardship um, can make us, it made me at times, you know, block our ears, shut our eyes. It's like, it's too much. But actually he's speaking, he's encouraging us, he's loving us all the time. And I tell you what though, being in worship and declaring you know, the truth of scripture through song and, you know, because music gathers all of who you are, it helps you in your auditory senses, it helps you scientifically, it says it helps you at a molecular level. And wow. so doing all these things and then declaring the living word of God, I mean, there's nothing quite like it when you're hanging on for your life. So years ago, we went 
through Compassion actually, sponsoring kids, we went into Rwanda and how our hearts got totally broken for that place and God really spoke to my husband on that plane and said, now you've seen it, what are you going to do about it? So we started up something at that time, you know, Rwanda was known for the 100 days of horror, the, the systematic, you know, brutally just murdering people from, you know, if you're part of the wrong tribe. Over this same 100 day period, rather than this, every year they do this 100 days of mourning. So a third of their year, every year, is mourning. So why don't we ask permission of the government and the church community whether we can come in and do 100 days of hope and just try and shift it. And he said, we'll just ask our friends, put it out there, Facebook, you know, just through media. Well, it, it was amazing and continues to just be incredible. So much so that like we've, we as in not us, you know, just lots of different people together, building villages and educating the educators, um, hospitals, surgeries, teaching the leaders, um, Christian leaders. We've got an office there now and we've got staff in Australia and um, oh, it's just so good. And now every teacher or educator from university down to primary school, um, Hope Rwanda is responsible for educating every educator in Rwanda to keep that education process strong and just growing forward and you know I with my life I want to announce his presence it just it's all about the presence of God it's not not about great songs or whatever my, my life is just I want to announce his presence and you know for me for everyone it's different we've all been given different gifts and one of the ways I can do it is to to write about it and sing it and, and that's what I'm really praying that this project does just continues to announce the goodness of God, to announce His presence, and that's all I want to do with my life. Worthy as a Lamb um, was written actually for a communion service at church. No one was coming up with anything, so I just went home one day and sat down and thought, I'm not getting up until I've written a song for communion. Uh, one of our music directors, Craig Gower, he um, had brought me back from England some of these very old um, hymnals. It was really through that that you know I just started playing Worthy as a Lamb and I thought, wow, if I could um, bring something to the table that was um, contemporary in its method but had almost a touch of being something so majestic. You know, and then I just started playing and that's how that song came about. And in, we weren't even going to put it on the album because really I just brought it for one service. And you know, if it gets sung again, great, but that wasn't the intention. The intention was just to have one great communion service. As soon as I got saved at 15, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I want to be part of bringing this hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. To other people. You know, I, I found myself doing that through worship, but actually um, it happens at every level of life. And I think that's what Mark and I love now about pastoring, you know, just on the streets with people and in hospitals with people. And it's all part of my worship. Just, I'm not singing about it, but I'm, well, my mum, you know, had us all singing from the time we could talk. My sister's in your Wesley and your band, very and she's much a part amazing. Of us. <laughs> um, and it was actually when I first became a Christian that, you know, I'd always sung. I, I grew up singing on television as a kid in Queensland, so I'd always sung. And then I finally become a Christian, and this performer in me had to die. Because God's like, I don't need your performance, I just want you. So for a couple of years, I found it really hard mm. to sing without weeping. Mm. Because my heart